Today we're going to do a simulation of all the wheels and axles. Let's learn physics. Here's our little simulation right here, different radii, different circumferences. And since you can't really see it on screen, that's what it looks like. Remember that the mechanical advantage is greater than one if it's a force multiplier. That's also a speed displacement divider. And if the mechanical advantage is less than one, it's a speed displacement multiplier, but unfortunately a force divider. We'll start with the, uh, the force multiplier. Now what you have to do is wrap the strings in opposite directions. And there are three of them because well, you can use, you can only use two at a time, but there are three so you can show multiple options. You can ignore this middle string and go for the outer and the inner for the most extreme example. So take this thing, ah, oh, that's, that's easy. I'll be using diagrams like this to help you see it. The input strings on the outside, the weights hung on the inside, so the input force is on the bigger diameter and the output force is on the little diameter. And this is what it really looks like, small input force, outer diameter, longer arrow, bigger F, larger output force. This is what we call a force multiplier. It takes your small input force, gives you a large output force. If you see a machine like this, that's most of the time the goal, to multiply your puny force, make it bigger. But it does also become a speed and displacement divider. Now if I switch, I can take this one, wrap this in the opposite direction, and just test it, feel how it is. Oh yeah, that, that's uh, it's definitely harder, definitely more difficult. Now, just as another indication of whether or not this is a force multiplier or a speed multiplier, watch, this is my input force. I apply a small input force over a, well, a really large input displacement. See that large input displacement? gives me a large output force over a small output displacement. Input works about equal to the output work, so a small input force gives you a large output force, but a large input displacement is required, and you get a small output displacement. Small input force, big output force, force multipliers, here's some examples. Simple doorknob. You apply the input force along the outside, and there's a shaft down the inside, it turns a much bigger force to move that latch. Deadbolt's the same idea with a key. Here's what I call a faucet and what other people around here call a spigot. That's another wheel and axle and you apply a force along that outer edge and it turns along a central axis and applies a larger force along a smaller shaft. There are a couple of big important wheels and axles in a kid's bicycle. The front end, this crank set, is the force multiplier. You apply the force at the pedal, and the output force is bigger, and applied at the chain. Now with all these machines, what you can do to make this into a speed and displacement multiplier is just switch the input and the output. Yep, every time, just switch the input and output positions, and you can invert the mechanical advantage. Remember, no machine can both multiply speed displacement and force at the same time. So if I take that weight, put it over here where I originally applied the force, now I pull on it, <coughs> okay, it's really difficult. It requires a whole lot of force. It requires a lot of force to do that. But notice, my large force, this clearly a speed and displacement multiplier because look how fast this thing goes. The output speed and displacement, bigger than the input speed and displacement, but it's also a force divider. Here's what it looks like, that's what I just set up, and here's the velocity diagram, a small input velocity, larger output velocity, and a large input force gives you a small output force. Boom, it just flies right up. With a, with a small amount of motion from the input, that thing moves really quickly. So, a lot of displacement, a lot of speed, but there is a lot of force that has to go into this. Low friction, work in equals work out. So you have a large input force over a small input displacement, which you get a large output displacement, and unfortunately a small output force. But that is the way of the universe. The rear wheel on a bicycle is a speed multiplier. Mechanical advantage is less than one. The input force to the wheel is applied forward by the chain and the output force is applied backward at the contact patch with the road. It's a force divider and a speed multiplier. Front drive wheel 
on this minivan is the same idea. Large input force at the shaft, the center of the wheel, and a small output force at the contact point with the road. Force divider, speed multiplier. Another speed multiplier is this fan. There's a large output force at the shaft, smaller output force at the outer end of the fan blades. Plus the moving wedge that is the tilted blades. This thing weighs 10 newtons. I have to apply about 30 newtons of force to get that thing moving because the radius to radius or diameter to diameter or circumference to circumference ratio is exactly the same thing. And you get a mechanical advantage less than one, the speed displacement multiplier that also divides force. It's about a one to three or three to one. And so as it was, when it was a force multiplier, remember, just switch the input and the output to change from a speed displacement multiplier to a force multiplier. Then radius to radius, circumference to circumference, diameter to diameter ratio is still a one to three or a three to one. And now I have to apply not 10 newtons of force, but about three and a third, a little over three newtons of force to get that thing moving. So this is a force multiplier with the input at the larger diameter on the larger wheel, output on the smaller wheel. Here's a diagram. It's got a bigger output force and input force. It's a force multiplier, mechanical advantage greater than one. And by the way, if you're using something like this, the easiest thing to measure, because the circumference to circumference ratio and diameter to diameter ratio and radius to radius ratio are all the same. The circumference is just the distance around the outside of a circle. You've got the thing that goes around the outside of the circle already. Just pull it around, mark it, and measure that. And do the same thing for the other ones. You have all the ratios you need. It's easy to measure that circumference. Just wrap that string around it. Remember, radius to radius, diameter to diameter, circumference to circumference, same ratio gives you the same IMA. Summary. Quick summary, no machine can multiply both force and speed and displacement. It's got to multiply one or the other. Mechanical advantage is greater than one if it's a force multiplier, but unfortunately, it's a speed displacement divider. And this is kind of what it looks like in this case. The input force is on the outside, the larger diameter. Output force is on the inner diameter. It's a force multiplier. Or if you switch the input and the output, you get a mechanical advantage less than one. It's a speed displacement multiplier, but unfortunately a force divider. Input force is on the smaller diameter, output force larger diameter. Input velocity is small, but the output velocity at the outside is nice and big. And the mechanical advantage of one can only change direction. For a mechanical advantage of one, that means that the radius, diameter, and circumference ratio is always one. So, guess what? That's a pulley. A single pulley is a special case of a wheel and axle.